It is one o'clock. It's time for our budget workshop on a beautiful Thursday afternoon. Who wants to go first? Are we going to start with telling people the what happened in executive session? That was a discussion we had yesterday of after we were all done telling people who what the decisions were. Uh, So people went in executive session to request raises for their groups. And so some people will achieve that, some people won't. And so we don't talk about the individual employee, but we have to talk about the decision that was made so that people know. I guess maybe I'm confused. I didn't realize that we were making any in individual decisions. I thought at this process this was a workshop where we talked in aggregate about the budget that will be, be presented in whole at which point the Board of County Commissioners will decide upon that because otherwise, I mean, if we want to start talking about what's the conversations that have been had in executive session, I'm very well prepared to have that, but I would prefer that what is discussed in executive session stays in executive session. But he's just talking about is when we did that yesterday, there was agreement when we came out, just to let everybody hear who's been asking for enhancements know the dollar enhancements that were granted, not the people, just the the enhancements because of the nameless, uh, just so that everybody has is updated on the status of the enhancements like they are right now. On yeah. Go ahead, Commissioner. And I thought we were going to finish the enhancements and then we're going to do that today. We'll agree on what well, we had talked about all at one whack. Yeah, we're going to we? do. Well, my understanding of this meeting, we have to get fact sheets out and copies for the commissioner's request. The uh, we're going to pick up. On the enhancements and then whatever's left, we'll tell you what we have before. We don't have to do it first. I just want to make sure that we yeah. talk yeah. about that because we that is okay. something the community is owed. Yeah. So who wants to go first on enhancements? I think we're down Who's next. Roughly to uh, 911 uh, 824 group, I think. Before we go into a new subject, um, can, I, can I just go back to the enhancements of the SO tech enhancements that we covered yesterday? Because I think we, there were a lot of questions that were what's... Those are actually still upcoming, Mr. Are they coming up again? Yeah. Oh, well, we're, we're on. Oh, are we doing this? <laughs> this is the iteration. Well, the current one, they are still on the list. Oh, okay, okay. okay. They're above his 824. Well, you, SO, SO tech is still coming. Two pages following this one, if we're going off the one that was presented yesterday. Right? So we so we're, on we're doing this one. And then we go through this one, and then there is going to be Sheriff's Office. Is he not right? talking oh, about no, nope, I apologize. It's sheriff's not, Office versus Sheriff's back. Office tech. I stand corrected. So, yeah, you are correct. You so, where are we going? Okay. Which? So, which you were know, um, What's the. 34180? Uh, correct. Yes. There we are. Yeah. Yeah. So all Thank you, Nancy. On, on all those different lines, and we were saying what was needed, what was not, and what was new. Uh, I think the difficulty that we started this year, and I, we've done it for several years back, is we identified carryover lines that are, that are not carryover, I, want, I don't want to use the wrong term, lines that, uh, that spending items that have to be spent every year. And if we didn't, we didn't do it this last year. And I think I identified with those checks, those that are are, are just uh, costs we incur every year. And those were put on enhancements. And um, 
the those that um, were the before we do that, I, I want to make sure that we identified, or I did, and I will communicate that there are several that we identified that we're just going to take off the list. So let's do that first. Okay. The very first one, the uh, 25,000 uh, replacement PC. So you're not going, you're not going off of the enhancement list that she's printing. I don't know. This is the list that we printed. So you want that your identifies list. those that are one-time purchases and those that we incur every year. Did you grab, do you have one of hers? I don't have one. I have it right here. Oh. I, I, I have one. Yeah, okay. It's, it should be the same. Okay, so There's we're going. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can put off the uh, 23,000, 25,000 replacement PC. Okay. Uh, we can put off the 21,000 for the replacement MDCs. Okay. Uh, we can put off... 5,000 fiber patch. Fiber patch. Oh gosh. 8940. Well, 9,000 UPS replacement, 36 of those, we can take off those off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, here. Oh. We're going down the line. Yeah. And the oh, next one is four thousand for the printer replacement. Mm -hmm. Forty five hundred for the scanner replacement. One, two, three down the network monitoring software. The additional VWare license you can put off for five thousand. Can I pause you for a second? Yes. You have two removals from yesterday, the pros office and three sixty five. We have to have that. So you're changing that? Yeah, that has to have. If we don't have that, then the software in the prosecutor's office does not work. What well, that's, that's the prosecutor's office. Sure. Sure. And then you had the uh, uh, Net motion software subscription? Yes. And that, that is one a yearly subscription that has we've been forced to put on as an enhancement every year. Because it's not we don't have a line item for that in, in our budget. So is there what's the reason that it doesn't become a line item since it's There's not no an enhancement? Reason. It's just well, never put on. Well if we want to do that, when I'm looking at the the budget for historical comparison, um, current year there's we aren't even. I don't understand why we're asking for an enhancement when we have not spent the mud, the the funds that were actually budgeted. They're being spent right now. Half a million dollars for it. Yes. They're being spent now on on equipment and software that we're waiting. The problem is, is the vendors do not have uh, equipment that we can buy. Uh, when I met with Marcus this morning, I asked him, "What can we buy out of our current?" budget year that that we can get in before October 1st. And he said, besides those items that we have ordered, we can't. Um, we're having a microwave that's put up off of Schweitzer in here. Um, they've been there three times and we try to get some another vendor within the, in the Northwest and we can't find any. Nobody's working. They can't get the equipment. We can't, we haven't even ordered, we can't get the generator that we have to replace that we funded last year. So it's just supply and demand and what's happening in China and what's happening. Yeah, you got yeah. You got six hundred and thirty thousand two hundred and seventy three dollars and forty three cent on spent yes. in your budget for yes. tech. The the software subscription should be an automatic roll. Those those should be put in when Marcus does it next time. Just that should be an automatic It's not roll. Marcus. It's we can't put it in. It has to be done by your office. Okay, well, that subscription should all be I, wait a sec, I have a question though. In regards to that subscription, is the subscription based upon the number of is it a subscription based upon number of platforms and are we increasing the number of platforms or is it is it by individual MDC? Or is it in a court the prosecutor's office? This is this is are we talking about the pros? Which one are we talking about? So my original question was you crossed off net motion software subscription and you said you need it 
And so when we discussed last yesterday, I said that you're asking for replacements, so that's not an increase no. in the number. So, so no. You, you're, but it's a recurring cost. And the problem is, is that there's not a line item on your general budget to make it recurring. So that's why it keeps coming back as an enhancement. But if you're going to be transparent in the budget and it is recurring, it goes on the regular budget and so not an enhancement. You have a line item for software subscriptions. I don't know what comprises all of those. They would know better than we would. So all what their subscriptions? So what do we have to do to fix that so it goes on the general and then that would cross it off of this, right? right. Well, it because would, that's, but it's still we still have a problem how we get to pay for it. As far as our discussion today, we're still trying to find out. Is this, these enhancements haven't been adopted and approved yet. So speaking for myself in regards to the entirety of technology within this line for 34180, which we have discussed multiple times, at the time of the printing of these documents, there was a delta of approximately $635,000 that is unspent. And we are asked to prepare and make decisions based upon the information presented before us that is here today. And the information presented before us here today is that there is $635,000 worth of budget space, in addition to $292,000, $292, thousand seven hundred dollars of additional enhancements to speed time I am not prepared to be adding enhancements when there is six hundred and thirty five thousand dollars worth of existing budget space which these line items fall under and we do this based upon where we are at today so uh, these licenses cannot be paid out of this year's budget these licenses these bills will be come out next year but there are six. You have to also understand, and Mike can explain it, that the overage or the uh, portions that we're not using of that six hundred thousand is calculated in that extra seven million that is being returned. So it is calculated in our general budget. Thank you. Yeah. So we're not. I'm not. We're not trading and, and trying to. These enhancements were told by the clerk and by the commissioners that this is how it is. It's not a line item that we have to do, and we've been advised, please put those as enhancements because there's not a single line item for it. We're just following through and doing what we've asked to do. And I think that's reflected yeah. in that when I'm asking if it's recurring, it goes on the other side because we're not documenting it because a lot of this is not an enhancement. And so the question is, back to what I was asking you, this is a recurring one that is not funded out of general because there was no line item. So is the solution that we fund it through enhancement and then put it on general the next go round? Can I clarify something? So the, the Justice Fund technology has a line item for software and software subscriptions. This current budget year, they were budgeted 122,500. They've spent 88,000 of that. They've only budgeted for 70500 this year. So that leads me to believe that they need to, if I don't know if those subscriptions were one time in one year in nature or whatnot. So they're one they're, year in nature. Right. So are you saying that if you've spent 88 so far, are there more or do you need, what What else do you need? Because if you're budgeting 7500 but you've already spent 88, that tells me you need more in that line item which is what I believe he's presenting. So how do we fix the problem? Because this one wouldn't be an enhancement. It needs right. to go there, and it's not funded properly. Then just say you guys approve for him to increase that line item, and then we will add it to the budget. Yeah. Is it permanent? Is it, I mean, because I mean, everybody's subscriptions are annual. But unless you're planning on getting rid of all the devices that run that software, it's foreseeable that it's a continuing, right. you know, continuing. Well, but, but like this, the light bill, it's going to be around every time. However, to speed up, because this these funds, um, and because we have digressed into this manner, so I'm talking about 34180, 644 object, 6440, 6490, 6530, 6600, 6900, 7000. Well, but here's, here's part of it. We're talking about solutions. I believe part of the solution is to put it back the way it was, which to put it as has been recommended by our uh, IT consultant, which is to move these funds back into IT. And that will... It has nothing to do with the IT here. This is all has to do 
with Spillman and all the operations at the sheriff's office. It has nothing to do with the general IT. I don't want They don't put their finger on it. This is not the, we're here for the budget, not the, that is a different question. And so my original question, we got to, this is not recurring. You got to increase your line item and put it on the general. That's the solution for this item. It's a piece of software. You need to increase that. And so whether or not we discuss and you put on the agenda to review technology and the impact that it's having on the bifurcation, that is why I put out that request that we look at that impact to this organization. It's not what we're doing in the budget. We can't not fund the sheriff's office because we don't like the setup of technology. We have to figure this out and deal with that problem separately. Otherwise, we are not serving Bonner County citizens. So nope. to make the line item correct, we have to do what Nancy recommended. Do you disagree with what the auditor has recommended to address that piece of software I subscription? Totally agree with that. So where does the board sit on following the auditing's recommendation on that piece? On the license renewal. Yeah, that should be a line item thing. Yeah. We're talking about the prosecutor office M three sixty five in the net motion, correct? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. And you removed the VM one, but right. you also the pro the office. Pro. pro that is for the prosecutor so office. should is that also a line item issue then it needs to have the same resolution no, that's, that's that the other one had yes they have it as two different lines on this well it all goes into the same bucket okay so, so that will be resolved the same way and so that shouldn't come back next year as an enhancement because it will come through general so I think you just said the VM um, one. So now it's back to you because I stopped you on the ones we crossed off yesterday. Would you repeat real quickly that last little flurry of things what we are just we track this right? Yeah. I don't see any down here that says VMware. I see the 365 and the net motion and then we have backup software licensing renewal. It's right in between. So it goes if you start with pros you office. We're taking that off. The additional VM license. Yes. yes. That's what I was just confirming yes. that we crossed that one off. So, but on the pros office M365 and net motion, they both need, they will, are required. We're going to be permanent on the general budget. We're yeah. going to increase right. the line. So we shouldn't see those back next year. And then the same with the camera and the backup software licensing renewal, yes. Daryl? Yes, correct. And that'll be a repeat, right? Yeah. Yes, we reoccurring every year. And then the security endpoint then should have the same, because remember I commented correct. on that yes. year. But I want one clarification on that, though, because I think you said the 3200 was the startup of something, and then there's a different, is there a different rate for the annual portion on the security endpoint? Uh, I would have to clarify. No, the security endpoint, if I recall, it was several hundred thousand, like 200,000. And so this so is, all of the software. so that's why I want to clarify in that one, because I think that might have been a one-time fee. It's a new cost every three every three years yeah. so it's not necessarily recurring every no. year not every year. so what's the right way to manage that one because it still should be general but it's not annual but, but, but like it's still, still cash basis so it doesn't matter if it's 3200 or 3200 right so should it be on an enhancement or should it be on the general well it has to come up for your if guys it, approval yeah, if it renews every three years then it's a reoccurring expense so let's put it on the general side and do the Would same you with that. Would split it like one third a year into the budget and carry over, or just every third year? Every third year, they're going to just have to remember to come back okay. and bring it forward. And is that reasonable, Mike, to put it on general? If it's it's recurring. Right, but there are recurring things on the on the justice stuff too. This is right now. We're this talking, is justice. This is justice. For them, but you're saying general. What do you mean by general? Not on an enhancement side of the yep, budget. Yep. It is. Okay. Back to you, Sheriff. You got compelled, correct? Yes, yes we already talked about that. You're on phone okay. replacement got, system. Are we crossing we're, we're, that? Yeah, we're not we're, we're marking that. Okay. Off. Yeah. okay, so that's removing a significant amount off of that line. Yeah, that should be it for all those. Okay, so wait a minute. I just want to clarify. Next to the 25 replacement PCs, the 21 replacement NPCs. Replacement laptops and Ethernet switches and replacement monitors have not been addressed. Um, At least in today's. No, we haven't because we still need monitors. 
Well, in 9430, as of the time of this printing, which was the one I'm looking at, the client went from 720, but there was $502,000. Okay, he said he's got 500,000 in equipment yeah. in getting ready to be invoiced at the moment. We have right? some invoice with Mobi up. If you see, um, if, we, if you want to go comp tech, uh, uh, site battery replacement, site location, all these, these were, these were scheduled to be done this year. All this money is, I won't say roll over because he doesn't like that, but all these will be, be rolled over and purchased next year. So one because of the things we cannot get vendors to put this equipment in. So one of the things that might be helpful next time budget is for me, and I is saying what's the dollar amount for the laptop, not just a number and the yeah. quantity, because right. I think our budget should be more clear so that we know exactly what we're purchasing. We well, have that thirteen hundred yeah. per laptop, nine of them. Okay. And we replace five them every year. five years. That's about three hundred and fifty thousand on the site replacement batteries Thank you. and all the stuff on that. So and let me be clear too, these the dollars don't roll over unless they're budgeted. They're non modular construction projects. So unless you're budgeted, these one time dispensations in the budget disappear. So if if they are to be purchased, they have to be rebudgeted if they weren't purchased this year. They, they, they don't automatically roll forward. And that's the purpose for the enhancement. Right. Okay. Because the carryover dollars don't necessarily equate one to one to what wasn't spent. So when we make modifications for things that account for inflation and whatnot, those eat away at those carryover dollars. <coughs> we're increasing for fuel, for things that we have to pay in a recurring nature that there's that are not enhancement based, which is what we've done. So it's not a clean one to one dollar ratio that's being carried over year to year just because it's not spent. It gets eaten up somewhere else when we make increases to recurring permanent line items throughout the budget. You need to make sure you gave a little bit of room in case your laptop costs more by the time you can get it. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for your go back to yes, SO. And for the 911, the contact enhancements. Um, where, where can we, no, no, so we can right. finish this, uh, okay, so you're saying, I mean, 12,000 replacement laptops, what are we doing there? We're, we're marking them off. Because no. Are you saying yes or no? Where? We, I don't know. No, no. We need a no, new direction. Yeah, sorry. Well, I think one thing that happened last year that caused a lot of heartburn is, I think this happened when the IT was split, and we took directive from what, what we were getting, and things got left off, and I think that caused a lot of heartache, and I don't want that to happen this year. I'm going to make sure that whatever is supposed to be in a in either law IT or general IT or however it ends up, it's there. And if there's not an assumption, it fails. So that's what we need to make sure that we do. So you have left replacement laptops, Ethernet switches, and replacement monitors for the top four, three items. Do you still yes. need those yes. as enhancements? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so what's our, the decision? Our, what's the decision? We need, we need okay. to know. We know what Daryl wants. We need to know what you're directing us to do. So my understanding is that we have not fully given the resources to the law side of IT and the prior budgets. And at the current status, we have bifurcated technology, and this is the cost of that decision. Correct. So we have to move forward, in my opinion, to make sure that they have the tools necessary to operate. Mr. Chairman, my understanding is that this is a new thing which creates more challenges, which is why I am trying and have continued to try to get back to being efficient and effective. I'm going to look now at Clerk Rosedale, the specific question of how do we bring the ITs back under one with this efficiency, which will not necessarily have to be answered right now, but that is my goal. The budget time is the appropriate time to do this. But so, and this so, so two things. So you've got a budget thing, and you have yep. it entirely, whether it's the right business political model. You can do it the business political way by a nuclear detonator. That's an effective way to do it. Yep. The, the budgetary model would be less difficult. If we're going to be spending the same dollars with the exception of a very couple things. Yeah, the I don't know if it's a good idea to... I mean, Nancy and I have a difference of opinion sometimes on things, too. We have to be bright minds differ on things all the time. So I think that I'm not so sure 
The heartache caused by the bifurcation of the technology budgets was because some things didn't get budgeted. I don't know the way you want to go on that. I'm just saying there's no easy way. Uh, it's going to be pain and heartache no matter which way you do. If you do that, probably doing that in a time other than when we're trying to bang out the rest of the budget would be a good thing, as opposed to trying to figure all that detail out right now. But that's right. Your well, whether it stayed two or became one, the necessary equipment is probably not going to change. Right, right, right. 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 Where, yeah. 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 where it resides at this point is just splitting hairs. It's, it's right. either one fund or another. We just need to know which one yeah. and if this is approved or not. Curtly, Curtly said that both sides need staff, mm -hmm. and I agree with Curtly. Both sides need staff. Currently said both sides need to be fully supported. I agree with that. Both sides need to be fully supported. Uh, if there's an economy of scale on one safety device, I'm not, I don't know about that, as opposed to two. But um, that's your call. So starting from the top, replacement PCs, very first line. They're gone. Gone. Twenty-one thousand MDCs. Gone. Gone. Replacement laptops. Still there. They're still there. Okay. So, we get a decision okay, so on the replacement laptops. Should we? Okay. Unless we hear objections, uh, we're gonna. The, the chairman is talking. Unless we hear noise. Okay. I mean, unless we hear con, con, you know. Okay. But it'd be <laughs> if we if we take nice description. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I'm just take saying. One line, if still we on. The yeah, Ethernet switches. Yes. Okay. Nancy, what were you gonna say? I'm saying just. For the ease and probably to speed things up, if we could just make a decision on the first one and then move to the next rather than bouncing all over and kind of repeating <coughs> the same topics over and again. So right, I guess I items would from be, top to bottom. Yes, yeah, so that list. I guess the question for me would be is he's got an enhancement of twelve thousand dollars for replacement laptops. Go are on. you got No, those are still there. So are you guys going to approve or not approve? And so he'll give the answer, and then we'll object if it's not there. That way we don't talk over each other. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so they're still there, theoretically. Okay. Ethernet switches? Yes. Okay. okay. Replacement monitors? Yes. Fiber patch cabling? That's Gone. Been removed. Gone. Gone. Okay. UPS replacements? UPS gone. replacements? Gone. gone. Hard drive replacement 65. Yes, we still need those. Okay. Uh, I have 24. I have 24,000 for the hard drive replacement. Mm -hmm. That's just the amount, as how many were we purchasing, the, not the dollar amount. Okay, the so they're replacing 000. 12. Because yeah. I was asking not to give the quantity. The little number next to it. Okay, printer replacements. Gone. 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 Scanner replacement. Gone. 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 Server UPS replacements. Yes. Server rack. Yes. Network monitor software. Gone. SME. Yes. Those are subject matter experts. Right. That they're not employed anywhere in this building. Pro office. Yes. Yes. Net motion. Yes. VM's gone. Gone. Additional camera license, yes. Correct? Yes. Backup software licensing yes. renewal. Security endpoints. Yes. Is the key. Phone replacement. No, it's gone. Gone. Okay, and then Carfell, that's already decided. Yes. Okay. okay. That cuts that number down significantly. So, so much I didn't add it up, but well, I guess going back to my question to each of these, what's your guys' decision on the enhancement? So uh, yes, we're uh, including all the ones Steve said yes to, is that correct? That's my understanding. Okay. Okay. Correct. So yes. Okay. Uh, <coughs> all right, the next thing is general expense. We talked about the additional funds. I, this is for my clarification. There is a 300000 and there is a two fifty five. I don't know where that fully ended up yesterday, whether we approved any of it, whether it was 255, whether it was 300 or what. 
I still maintain that when we say additional funds needed, it needs to be itemized to show how you come up to that number. We don't have itemization, and that's a significant amount to pull out of the budget for generic. It, it isn't specific enough. And even when we were in the room, we knocked it off by almost $50,000, but not really an explanation. So that was my request of not earmarking money without additional information from the person who submits the budget because then it, it leads, this one actually leads to more questions of why would we move forward with a project when it wasn't fully funded and we were going to use a fund that we couldn't guarantee that we could complete the project with. And somewhere it feels like I'm missing something okay. and it's because it just says 300,000. Back to the EMS station? Yeah. Yes. We're on the general we expense. The 250, I thought we agreed to that yesterday. I'm not sure why we're going back. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, well, I remain yeah. a yes. Yeah, the way it's wrote, it looks funny. It looks like it's got an extra 300000 in there, and it, it doesn't. It's just the way it's... All right, so you're saying yes to 255 255 Yes. And no. Yes. And I can help with that real quick. And I can answer some of what Asia's questions. So what we I budgeted for this last year. We were given a high, a medium and a low number from the engineering company when all the designs were coming out. I don't know where Teddy is, but her successor. So the board decided that because of the way construction, pricing, everything was going, we would budget at the top number, which we did. So I think with construction, there's volatility still involved in that. I think there were some things that were probably kind of overlooked at the time by, I'm not going to place blame on anybody, but that's what those are for is to take care of the items, which I think Teddy itemized, in, or Spencer, whoever did the list, came up with to come up with that number. So there isn't that, I understand what you're saying, but there isn't a list that comes up to 300. And that was evident when she gave you the number of 255 right. and people agreed to 255. There is not accounting for this line that says how you come up with the dollar amount that you're asking to be improved. We didn't have exact numbers at the time I had to get that enhancement in. Um, like Northern Lights, for example, they told they quoted us about $150,000. The actual came in at $136,000. The city of Sandpoint, um, they um, estimated $80,000 for our building permit. They dropped that down to thirty. dollars So we didn't have exact numbers, and so I did a, by what was estimated. I understand that, but we, in budgeting, I received a sheet that showed me an estimate and a reel that came to the figure. And even yesterday, the dollar amount that you reduced it to wasn't identifiable. You couldn't pick the piece of paper up and say, oh, it's really 255. And I understand that it's not a guarantee, but it calls in the question of the whole project of we are, are we underfunded for the project that we're going to depend on an, an enhancement for a building that we're working on? Because then there, there's a problem with even planning to do something that we didn't have all the money for at the time that we started this project. And so the dollars I get, there is an amount that you're not going to be able to know because of the fluctuation of the market of construction. $300,000 is a lot of fluctuation without definition. And so it does. in this case, you've got two to one, but I think there should be more substance to that amount of money, especially when you're saying you have $500,000 thousand dollars to spend and you're going to pull out 300 of it for a project that we're not clearly defining when that's not the only area that we have to give money to and we have to turn to the other department and say we don't have it to give to you for a reason and I I, I find it hard when I get an email that says we put enhancements in from half a million to a million and sometimes we actually never use it or don't use it for what we ask for that's a budget problem for me because if I give you an enhancement for a tractor and you buy a truck for it, that's not good. Well, no. But those are the enhancements that are brought forth and the commissioners agree. We don't, each department runs their own department. Um, if they come forth with enhancements, that's up to them to justify to the board. Right, and, and that's why I'm saying I so want to see the paper. At the, at the time when they budgeted at the very top of that project, when we got the quote, what if the quote finally came in even below? She wouldn't even be asking for this. So I think there's, like I said, there's volatility. Even when the quote came out with the 
engineer, it was two years ago, or I don't know how long ago it was at this point, but you know, we're budgeting for the highest we amount for that like six, six and a half million. So how did we drop $50,000 from the day the paper was printed to the discussion yesterday? The actual, the, the actual No, that's not what happened. We had this printed out, and we changed the number by 50000 In terms of in a shift, that's a significant shift, shift that can be hugely beneficial if we were to say, I've got 50000 to give to Parks and Rec, for example. How did we make that shift when we already had that? And that's what was not given to me as a commissioner to make that calculation. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to take a crack at this. Uh, when we're talking about what is beneficial, I believe we're writing our budget to be what is beneficial to Bonner County in the long term. And that building is without question in the long term interest of Bonner County. The savings to the county with the transfer of EMS to something that we own, the long term cost of having our employees in a building that has mold in it, we don't even know, but looking at our health care insurance costs, I'm terrified of thinking about what those people in 10 to 15 years are going to be putting on our bill. So the sooner we get them out of that environment, I am 100% in support. I live in a very old house. I'm keenly aware of the challenges of what it takes for construction. Usually I tell my wife what it's going to take. She laughs at me, and she usually ends up being right that it takes twice the time and twice the money. I, I, so but but I this, this is not is, this is oh, not a discussion yeah, of right. whether or not the building is valuable. It's we don't build half a building and say we ran out of money. We not need to that's do a good job. That's, that's why I'm in support. I suggest we do this. I we suggest just, we do this. I'm a yes. Going forward, uh, prospectively, after this, we look at everything very carefully, uh, examine. And how until then, just spend it. Yes. And this is the last tactical. This appears to be the last tactical mile on this project, at least. From this vantage point, I say we don't be any wise town foolish there. We are committing to move EMS away. I mean, the foreign or against that project, I'm just saying that we started that. It's underway. It appears we're arguing over the sake of $45,000 and maybe detail. No, I'm not. I'm asking for the objective information to pull that out of right. the budget from the entire county because $300,000 that we don't explain, and that is not saying I'm not moving forward with a project, it's saying taking it and putting it there means something doesn't get. And so I have to have accountability, not just to employees, well, but also to taxpayers. For some reason. I get it. So you guys, no. you, I, I I've, I've lost the battle of itemize, but it's not good practice not to itemize. And there does need to be cushion for construction. So it's not me squabbling over $50,000. It's the lack of detail to support a significant amount pulled out of a budget when you're saying that we only had 500. I understand. I agree. So we can just move on to the next one because well, I lost the battle. Right. I, I just we rather have publish, documentation. We have to publish the budget if we don't put it in. It's not going to be in. Uh, so no, direction right. for the auditing, please. 255, yes. Yep. Okay. We kind of fall in the same category as Daryl's stuff. We budgeted for stuff, but he couldn't get it because they just won't ship it. And is that price going to be good when he actually does get to order? You're going to have an increase there, and you're going to have to deal with that when it happens. So your difference is he gave you a list of the stuff. That's I mean, all I'm asking. And that's with everything, so you can't itemize something based on three months from now's price because nobody knows what that'll be. You just have to put a percentage of buffer in there and go forward. And if you don't spend it, it goes back in the general Did we get clarification on airport? So that is not going to be paid from a grant. Okay. So that would be our other so. He needs, he needs the enhancement of 200000 He didn't state that he actually absolutely needed it. All we asked was we don't have two hundred thousand dollars from my perspective. Right. We'd have to figure something else out. We'll see if they can patch another year out of it. Yep. The the statement he gives says replacement snow blower due to repeated catastrophic failures with current blower. So that might be an ARPA thing or something like that. Uh, no, that's a procurement thing, so we wouldn't want to be using ARPA for that. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do. No. But we can 
table that and move forward yep. for today's conversation and well, process. Well, today has to finish our conversation. Yes. Okay. So just, okay. yes, table that one. We'll come back to till today. Fiscal year 25, hopefully. Okay. So is we're saying no to the snowblower? Is that what's? That I am a, I'm a no at this time. Yeah. At the moment. No. And we said, so we're, we did the district court. They're going to, all right. Um, we're on. We did. Fair. We did elections, right? We did the fairground. Uh, yeah, 824. 911 communications. We did that, uh, right? We can. No. Um, oh. I'm talking to Marcus. He's out on the job site. Uh, the site location can postpone until next year. That's maybe six thousand. Um, and the additional microwave link can be postponed. You have. So that's the first one, 107. Uh, it's the second from the bottom. I want to clarify that because it's the exact same dollar net with a little bit different wording. It's not done twice? No. No. Yeah, we have so you're one, doing the addition is no, but you need the replacement? Yes. Site battery replacement? We, we, yeah, we need those. Replace. We don't have those batteries replaced until the site goes down. Replacement repeater power supply? Yes. Replacement mm -hmm. repeater? We would really like that because when one goes down and we have a shortage in supply, then we will be without replacement. They don't give you the battery with the replacement. No. Okay, so you just cross off the bottom two. Yes. So the link replacement and the repeater number two. And they need the top four items. So that's a, no, I need the batteries. I can give away with the site relocation of 86,000. I can give up the additional microwave link. Right. We can give that away. Um, and you said you needed the other ones? No, the microwave link replacement, we can do that until next year. Okay. But I need the replacement repeater supplies and the two repeaters. So we're getting three. 2648, okay? So that's yes to the replacement repeater, yes to the replacement repeater power supply, and yes to site battery replacement. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. And no to everything else? Yes. Or this year? Confirmation. Steve is a yes. Steve said yes, and we don't. Steve is a yes. Yes. That shaved off 300. Now we're at the assessor's assessor. just been waiting for his chance. My turn? Yeah. Okay, um, we have four things on there. If we can start uh, uh, with the two replacement vehicles, that would be great. I talked to Grant this morning about this. He put $50,000 in for two vehicles. I thought that was kind of. Uh, uh, kind of Short, short, but he said he got online, he looked at these uh, all-wheel all drive four eco sports and that's what he just on online for. It. Those vehicles are requested to replace uh, a, uh, a Liberty uh, 2005 and a uh, Tracker 2004. Uh, they're vintage, uh, but they're to replace those two vehicles. Here's a list of the vehicles that we do have. All of these vehicles were purchased by, by Jerry Clements when he was here. Is there a mechanical malfunction with the ones you have? Uh, these have age. They're, they're, they're falling apart because they sit outside over, over winter, uh, so they're deteriorating. One of these, actually, I just learned about, has an air conditioning problem that cannot be fixed without replacing the entire system, which, which the vendor says is probably not worth it. Is there a reason you can't use the county pool vehicles? We can and do in a, in a pinch, but uh, these vehicles are separate from county vehicles, and the reason for that is, is the way that uh, our revenue is set up. So we can't put these in the pool, which would be the suggestion, I assume, that you're saying. 
No, no, I'm not asking you to put those in the pool. I'm saying that for this upcoming budget that you use county vehicles because that I've been in a few meetings with the prior board where one of the suggestions was we don't use vehicles all year round and so they do Are deteriorate they and lose pool? money. Yeah. So why not use the pool for the vehicles? To answer, to answer your question, yeah, if, the, if I had funds to lease uh, the vehicles or rent the vehicles from the county pool, we can do that. No, our, we have vehicles. Bob, there are there, we have four wheel drive vehicles that could be used by the assessor's yeah. office. Yeah. For free? Yeah. Yeah. Can you give me no. 11 of them? Well, they're already, <laughs> well, you're only asking for two, them. though. They're in part of the motor pool. How many? Okay. Can I just ask when Grant got the pricing, did he request the government pricing for the vehicles? Too? I do not know. Okay. Bob, did he go to the other No. No. So he probably went online and probably did. But in this current budget cycle that we're talking about, we've got four-wheel drive vehicles that are aging in the parking lot. Uh, if they're available to us on a daily pick, well, for actually for months. Just go down to Bob and sign up and put your date and when it's returned, and then it just comes out of the pool. How many do we have in the pool? <coughs> so He's only know, asking for two. In a, in a, I think we have two. I have to check to see what's good. In the winter, in the summer, we issue them out to different departments full time. But in the winter, we have a, a surplus of a, a larger surplus of four wheel drive vehicles available. So, if I'm hearing that the assessor's office can come to the county pool at any time and get as many vehicles as they need, no, not so or at least two. <laughs> I'm being specific to two because that's what you're asking for. And in that parking lot, we have four wheel drive vehicles during the time that would be available to the assessor's office to use. And when you go down with Bob, you just like if you needed it for a whole month, you, that's what you would. But we'll need it for like five months. Okay. But these vehicles are going to have to be replaced at some point. Some of these aren't even four wheel drive. Our people are over here in Dale in, 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 uh, in winter too, so they're going to have to be replaced at some point. And they're generally replaced out of that uh, assessor's fund, that new evaluation yeah. fund. So. <laughs> to answer your question. If Bob has the vehicles. We can wait until next year. Okay. Okay. And another forty nine ninety five. The other three items we have, there, there's a, a little bit of error here. There's supposed to be two residential uh, appraisers and one commercial. Oh, yeah. That's true. So, as to the residential appraisers, the reason I need them is to uh, better address our new construction needs. No, you can't see it very well. But here's a map that has spotted all permits that are out there. Our latest count is 2,120 permits. That was well, like a month ago. That are out there that, that need to be uh, oh, visit, physically visited and uh, assessed and if they're completed, uh, put on the rolls. To give an example of the importance of that, uh, our, our posting uh, of these new construction, that is, that is vehicle or houses that have been final, ends October 15th because we have we have deadlines we have to meet. By uh, after October 15th of last year, there were 221 that hadn't been added because we just didn't have the time to get out to them. Now, if you use the, the mean appraised value for Bonner County which I have here, and it is a report from the State Tax Commission, and it's a ratioing permit, our, our form, and it shows the average assessed price for a house in Bonner County in 2022 was 536,686. If you multiply the 221 homes by that, you're talking about $118 million that of new construction and that could have been added to be considered in this year's budget. We ended up, your 90% ended up being $291 million uh, that we were able to bring forward in new construction. Of that $291 million, after all of the my mystical uh, math. math and all that other stuff, you ended up with in the neighborhood of $16.5 million that you could add. You go through another process, and I believe that the county proper's percentage was somewhere just shy of a half a million dollars. So 
if I can get people out there to do these and start working on these, at present over 2,000 permits, we can start adding more new construction, bring things up to date. Bring them on the tax roll. In addition to that, we have what we call uh, additional dwellings. People put up granny pads and things like that. Well, there were 67 of those that we didn't get to. And of course, we average out because it's not the same price as a whole house construction, but you're still talking about $20 million more dollars that in new construction value that could have been added. So I need the people to get out there. All Everybody else is doing statutory uh, requirements, that is, uh, doing the uh, revaluing of all the existing over 45,000 parcels that we have in the county. So that's that's what I need those things for. So I support that we need another commercial appraiser. You've only got one person doing that, and they have all of that work to do. And I, my understanding is we're very far behind on commercial appraising in Bonner County. The whole state is behind. Right, but we have, do you have the numbers of where we are from the commercial side, or is that not so? Right now I have, we actually have two people in there. One is, uh, went in there last year. He was supposed to be a, uh, under the tutelage of the, the existing, the only resident, or commercial appraiser we have. If he wins the lottery, we're really behind the, behind the ball. Here. Only making He's five gone. We're lost for And that's what my concern months, is, is there's months. no other commercial appraiser in your office no, at this and, time? and the one that was put in there uh, spent his entire time doing uh, uh, personal property inventory. He's just now finishing up all that stuff. So they do personal property, they do commercial property, they do condos. We have two condo, three condo buildings in, in, the, in the county here that are selling for multi-million dollars each, and we have, they haven't had time to visit. Okay, so we need, we need, for purposes of getting out to the field and actually doing it, but I also need the, the depth and the breadth of the expertise. Everything the commercial does, everything that they touch is a special assessment process, and it takes extra training, and it takes time to learn to do that. I don't want the indispensable person. I want at least three people in my organization that can do all of those things, so we don't find ourselves without. So, Mr. Engelhardt, are you going back through a series of this conversation. I believe I heard that if we would have had all of the new construction that was could have been added to the rules, it would have been a net increase of funds of approximately $500,000. Well, that no, that was based the $500,000 in the net. I'm just, I'm, I'm guesstimating. I don't know the exact percentage numbers. Um, Mike or Nancy could probably tell you that. But when we started out at $291 million and we ended up with a 16, then it's divided amongst all of your um, taxing, taxing districts. districts. The county portion, I believe, was somewhere just shy of a half million dollars. I may be wrong. One thing that new construction does do, it increases our forever base. And so we can forever increase our, our taxes, not on the existing taxpayers, but as supplemental taxpayers, the new ones coming in, which in which we build 3% off that. So it's a compounding good thing. It's growth every, for every growth. taxing agency benefits from the assessor mm -hmm. being out there and, and getting as much of the uh, new yeah. construction. Uh, yeah. So yeah. can I ask just two questions? How many residential appraisers do you have, and how many fully functioning commercial appraisers do you have? We have uh, we have five now that are that are out in the field and functioning. Residential? Are, no, five yes, residential. residential. And we we have uh, two vacancies, so which hopefully will be. Soon. Um, and commercial end, we just have the one that is, as you said, Correct. fully functional. But you, so you're, that is a problem to only have the one person. So you've got five there with two available to fill, is what you're saying? Yes. But you don't have a commercial. And, and you and keep so in mind that just a couple of years ago there were 10 down there. Okay. But in this budget cycle, I think it's imperative to have a commercial one because relying on just one commercial appraiser is significant and a lot of drain on that one individual. Um, any thoughts on the commercial appraiser? Because I think this has been going on for decades in Bonner County where that department has not had that specialist there. And just giving it to you actually doesn't really mean you're gonna fill it anyhow. I think we've had the conversation, did you have someone that would wanna transfer into being a commercial appraiser, but we have, we have some residentials that uh, potentially could go into that. 
I am in support. And like I said, it's, it's far more complicated and requires more school. Well, one of the unique things about this particular presentation is that the assessor, to a certain extent, is directly correlated with revenue, which yeah. more would help more us with. The appraisers you have out there, the more. Which would help us to address part of the challenges of this process right here. I am certainly in support of the commercial. What about, so he's asking for two residentials. Where is the board at in regards to that one? He has the May board. I point out one thing on, the, on your list here? The funding, it shows three residential. Yeah. The commercial will be a little bit more money. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, for me, if you don't assess it, she can't bill it. They don't get it right. Which means we don't get it, which means all the rest of the taxpayers yeah. pick up the bill. And everything that comes on the tax roll saves yeah. every taxpayer a couple we, of we pennies. Have, we have nothing to do with taxing or anything. But nope. we, we, use value. we create the ball and bring it to the field where you guys play. Yeah. And she turns it into revenue. Right. Alicia, so cool. the residential appraiser is at $60,000. Do you roughly know what the commercial appraiser is at? Uh, not right off the top, but I would say no more than seventy, probably. Yeah. Is that well, an so inclusive of? So you'll go one and two. So, so sorry. you're saying salary and benefits That's when you say no grade seventy? Um, yeah, and I can double check. I just a agree. rough estimate. Yeah. That's fine. So I'm in favor of the commercial with this current budget cycle. I don't think that we can mm. spread another residential. Uh, I think, yeah, for me, you have to pick what's your, that's your biggest weakness in the department right now that you need to advertise for. And I understand that, that I understand, that if, if, if I may, every fiscal year we delay putting those people in here as a fiscal year that you delay and you have to have them. And I don't disagree, and I think that's why we need to actually itemize what people are requesting so we know that we have the funds available. If you don't do that, at the rate that we've, we, not everybody's getting even what we say yes to because we have far exceeded, I think, that number between these three days. That's where the itemization helps us drill it back down. So our current process doesn't afford that, I don't think. I'm a one and one I think we have to start, if we just allow this, if we keep kicking this can down the road, we just keep falling, falling further and further and further behind and it makes it more and more difficult for us to catch up. Um, so I, Mr. Chairman, it comes to you. I'd go with the one and one. Uh, one commercial and one residential. Yeah. So does he drop then off the, more? Then the two dropped? opens are already there. So you would end up with in the next year, you he will get four new staff members because he's got two available now. So we're giving him additional. Very I, there are there are other departments also that need people I completely yeah. get it but you have to consider and we'll be helping to generate funds for those thank you yeah. thank you up to you uh, Bob Solid Waste so Solid Waste is an enterprise fund it's not generated by Solid Waste so Everything on my list is in order of priority. Loader tires are the biggest heat uh, in loader. We need a Colburn side office. We have some new construction, so we'll take a new side office there. Uh, we need a sander for one of our pickups. Slide in the sander so we can scan the site. Um, snow pusher for the Colburn for the in loader there. And fog coating for Blanchard and Crater Valley sites to, to uh, fog clear our, our pavement. I like a uh, roll-off trailer, um, solid, uh, solid waste technician for the tipping floor and a site attendant. Those wouldn't start till May because the new tipping floor will probably be operational in May. So, um, and again, and we only um, spend money on these enhancements if we have money from our run-in. So, so this is just a running Those are self-funded. And we prioritize them as we can. Okay. Can you, when, what does a budget equity adjustment mean? So we have some site attendants that are not, they're, they're getting a less hourly rate than the rest, so they weren't adjusted properly through, through the past budget year. So we need to bring those up to, to everybody else. Well, these are enterprise, so it does not affect the general. I'm in support. 
I don't want to give a comment. We need to figure out how that keeps happening every year where there's, there's someone doesn't adjust when they were supposed to adjust because that's not fair to employees if that's not fair. No, it's the same sheriff. Oh, the new HR sheriff. Oh, my bad. Not putting pressure on anybody. Next one is the tortoise. All right, the first item. It's not just things that we do the active shooter every year, but it's not really reflected. The second part is this year we started doing the new drug test policy. We're required to do supervisors reasonable suspicion class two. And that's not really budgeted for. We've kind of gone over just covering that. We need to do it. The second, and that's a slight amount. That's a little bit under five. And then the second item is workers' comps guesstimate. We don't know until December what the next year's prices will be. It's based on a three-year history, though, so I can throw a guesstimate. And I'm thinking that should cover it. It's pretty predictable, actually. Did the experience rating go down or up? It's about slightly next year because we're dropping off. It's a three-year history a couple years back. We're going to lose a year that's slightly better than the new year coming on. The new year coming on is slightly more than the year dropping off. So we'll have a worse experience rating on the next one? Slightly above a little bit, yeah. But if I look at this, Christian, does this mean that the workers' comp increase is going to be going to EMS? Or is it coming? No, EMS remains flat, it says. It's more of an answer. No, it says, sorry, yeah, no. no, increase for EMS, county remains flat. Exactly, the county should be semi-flat or close. The EMS was slightly more, I believe. Just guessing again, because I don't know for a couple well, months. But doesn't, doesn't EMS pay for that? Don't you bill EMS for that? That's true, separate bill up for EMS. Okay. Yeah. So, so they pay EMS there. Okay. Whatever that bill is. Charges the EMS number, maybe then. It's separate. Well, nine, 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 nine. But I guess if you're saying it's going to increase, is the increase only due to EMS, or is it, I mean... No, it's We're the working county. in two different fund. I mean, two different, completely different budgets right. here. So, if and he's saying the EMS one is staying flat. No, no, he says no. the county is so staying flat. Yes. So the increase oh, county remains EMS. flat. So, I'll, okay, the experience rating is for all of our business. It's just that we are paying it out of difference. So, if our experience rating is going bad, we do have to allocate for the increase that will come to that fund. It's just that on our end, we're going to make an adjustment of how we pay it. Exactly. My yeah. question, though, is $29,000 re reasonable if you look at what your negative experience rating is if you give the fact of the trend of workers' comp insurance in Idaho has had increased claims of longevity with increased claims due to COVID. $29,000 does not seem like that. And then we'll probably be done here, but one thing, our moderator or our experience modifier is the same for EMS or county or tied in. But I think from memory, the county, there's a little bit of leeway still there while well, EMS have been under, so we've been a little short. That's why I put the note in there that's more EMS. Can be a little right, but I need to account for that in EMS because it gets allocated to yep. EMS, which is a completely separate budget. So what's the percentage of the 29 that goes to EMS versus the other I side? I can't the local quick answer. So how about you s figure I that out and give it to okay. her because that's what okay. she's asking for. I do that. But I think you should maybe guesstimate. 29 sounds low for how poorly that fund, when you're in that fund, it, it raises the rates more sometimes than when you think, especially if we're going to get a worse rating this year. Absolutely. And I tend, as a, as a way, I'm not an income producer, I'm just a loss producer, yeah. I tend to run things pretty tight where I underestimate, not over. I know we've talked to Arthur about that, but I tend to do the bare minimum to squeak by. On this so one, I since it's in the insurance industry and we've seen them increasing rates by 5% across the board and then looking at individual, I think it's reasonable not to be that tight on that fund because that, that, that's a little tight. I'll give it a So what is the number that we're trying to suggest for this particular tort fund and this object at this time? I, I, I recommend do it 20 as a minimum. I don't ask for extra. And uh, that's for the county? Or for EMS because they are two different funds and one needs to be with EMS and one needs to be with the county. So what is the county one? Because we're looking at tort, so what is the county that you're recommending? Is there an enhancement or are we sticking with the... The, the confusion is that it is one <coughs> policy, but it's just certain people have to pay a percentage. So you have to work with Nancy on how much you're saying EMS pays versus how much comes out of general. But the full policy for the workers' comp benefit is increasing by that dollar amount. You have to give the division to her. Well, if, you could, that, if you guys can vote on the 29, and I'll tell Nancy once I'm out of here, exactly the breakdown. Yes. Yeah, next 
hours and amount of hours. I mean, yes. Y'all will task where it goes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it'll be. Uh, so yes to the 29. Yeah, then, How about the If we want insurance. The, the question I have on the active shooter training, that one comes from, that one we were invited to participate for free with Boundary. Why are we paying? Well, is it in person or what's the problem? It was in person. Okay. Are we, I would like to try free before I pay and see if that could go off. Is that reasonable? Because if you remember that was that uh, meeting that we had on emergency planning. They were offering free active shooter training. I prefer free. Okay. So and we drive was, down there? We drive down there? Is that boundary uh, we, active shooter? No, they, that gentleman was going to a different location than trying to get schools to actually participate, and Ponderay School District agreed to participate. So I think we have an opportunity to be free. And if that's this, all that works like two, three grand. The other part is the reasonable suspicion provider. So if you cut out the renewal of the active shooter or think zoom only, it's not orientation, it's think zoom, that'll save us like two, three grand. So that won't be just by then. Okay, yeah. so for the first 5,000, we're saying the think zoom, we're saying no or yes. He's reducing the number. Or reduce it to, I might go squeak by again. And it's made us, if I get rid of the, the uh, active shooter, I just renewed a couple months ago, sort of oh. doing it for next year, but um, I've had to do, I kind of mix two things. I had to do also the drug testing training for supervisors. So if you cut me to zero, increase to keep it the same as before, I probably squeak by. Or, we'll or squeak I'm sold. So kind of, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna go with so what he just said. Zero, zero. Yeah. zero. zero. I, I like zero. <laughs> Zero fits, but you're really good. That's but fun better. risk tort, two hundred thousand dollars. And this might be off the table now because I talked to yeah. Nancy. I think we just this is, that this is something right. he just kind of wants to find. It's to build up. We don't have what I want to fund. No, nope, that's fine. Yeah, it's not. Necessary. That's good. I give it up. Safety improvement. That's the basic idea. We'll have a big meeting on Monday. But the idea is that if part of risk, if you see your risk, you reduce it. I've asked the last couple of years, but it was a very risky county. We can't afford it. A fun to fix things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we are kind of. So this is a wish list? It, it's a wish list, yeah. an undefined wish list that if a problem comes up, we can fix it. And there's no safety fund. I propose. And I think that that's where on the risk side, if we start doing internal audit controls, that it doesn't have to cost us money, but that we should be doing that ourselves because we're already paying employees. Sorry. I see a bit over here. I'm sorry, bit. Christian. I'm sorry. My dad. That's why I gave you that example of doing an internal audit. We can capture our own risks in that way this next season. So if we strike the one out of that number, I'm sold. <laughs> Increased deductibles. That one is, again, very conservative. I'm right at lean. We're probably okay this year, but it's so hard to predict based on, that's not even one vehicle getting wrecked. So deductibles to self-insured. The first 100 on our vehicle is our own risk, and the first 500 on a tort. So um, just based on how we've been doing the past, we've been flat on how much we spent. Sold, flat. So a little extra might give, it might be necessary, I recommend it, but yeah. But I don't, I don't, zero, zero. I don't agree on flat when it comes to insurance because the industry has marked everybody up significantly and so it's not oh, yeah. going to be, we have to fund it. You're trying to anticipate an increase in deductible, right? Yeah, this is not to pay for the insurance, this is we pay our own claims in house basically. This and you're trying to increase claims. for the deductible, which we have done a lot of, so I don't yeah. think we can go flat on that line because but we have increased claims that we have had to use. In fairness, there was also some conversations, though, about the way that we did that in regards to the funds and the individual users of those having some accountability with ownership of some of those accidents. So I think this is a conversation that there is a much deeper uh, dive that could be gone into. And the proposal in legal, I haven't changed our risk policy. I think what you're talking about is that I've been replacing items not depreciating but you know full value. So that's still being reviewed by legal and everything to see if we could, uh, to do it as uh, depreciated value with an insurance company would do instead of full value like we have been doing for a risk policy where if you follow the rules of reporting and trading, you get full reimbursement. So that's still being loaded with them. But that's different than you're asking to increase your deductible. Well, that would impact because deductible is for all the expected losses. Each time we have a fender bender for 2000 or or wreck vehicle for 50 Right, so you're arms. trying to increase the deductible well, yep. for an increase in occurrence, which is separate from the discussion of whether or not you pay out that line. And so the question still remains, do we have an increase in incidences in the county where we have to pay the deductibles? Well, but we're self-insured, so... If, and, and it's been kind of flat, but we sometimes we go over a little bit. It's, um, it's been flat all these years. 
be able to repairs. I mean, I don't have sub thousand dollar repairs anymore. The policy change might help if I'm not paying back the full amount lost. That's all our money in a way. I mean, the, the way it's, uh, there is still a deductible, even money. though that's self insurance. I don't want to conflict, not right. understand oh, oh. that. So, 35, do you need, do you see an increase in usage such that you need mm -hmm. an increase on the oh, yeah. item you listed? Definitely, yeah. Okay. Because you pay, and it's called deductible, even though we're on SIR, it's the old carryover. But everything we pay, like 99.9% is all self-insured. Nothing gets turned in really. It's all, all my repairs. All it is is we're not sending the bill someplace else, but there's still like, a deductible. It's just too much work yeah. to go through explaining the difference between exactly. the two in budget. And that's concerning. So do you see an increase in occurrences that means that $35,000 covers it, or is it a, too high or too low? It's probably too low is the way I run it, but so, um, that's my recommend is the 35. I would run it. What is your range if you're saying it's too low? Oh, it's, it's so hard this one vehicle difference would blow it out of the water. So, um, well, 35 is what is on this enhancement yeah. list, so I'm not. I'm asking above the 35. And we're already yeah. above, If I, pardon me. Yeah. Are we above the 500,000 that we started at? Wait. So we're way above. The, so we're already like, oh. so there's red, and then there's deep red, and then there's crimson, and we're like in arterial right now. So that doesn't mean that we don't go through everybody's to see if it needs, yeah. and then you have to go through and see, okay, where do you have to cut? And so we can't say because, like, for example, I'm sure Pete said, and they're like, my crap's all the way at the end, so there's going to be nothing. <laughs> Why did I come? That's not how we do it. So we have to go through every one of a need of that group and then go back and say, okay, we didn't have this much money. We have to cross some stuff off. So reasonable to have 35000 <laughs> For th he's panicking because I can see it. <laughs> 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 he would have to do what he So you need 35000 No, kind of cut if you want. The only danger is to have kind of zero control. Did you it say? Come, you cut to zero, but the problem is if I do run out, then I'm going to come to you and say, please give me another 50 out of the general fund or something. You know what I mean? So I hate to take it off the table for other people. So if you want. Don't take it off the table yeah. if you need it. We'll address it after yeah. we go well, back through. If I you're saying know. it's a need, we shouldn't n yeah. not put it there because. But, but I'm not going to know until next summer. Or I this understand. Is, this is the process where we address it. On our, it's on our <laughs> part. <laughs> I'm going for the lab. Yeah, they have so. to lead to begin with. I mean, the industry yeah. has raised yeah. costs. Yeah. Yeah. If you're saying 35, yeah. put 35 there, okay. and then we address yeah. to see if we have $35 to give you. And the only reason is Nancy hates it when I come yeah. to her later saying, oh, I need to buy the drug one because it might yeah, not be there. There's no table in because it's going to get yeah, down today. But we, we know that we're over, but we have to go through everybody's enhancement request to see where we have to cut after because we, otherwise we would have stopped after the 300000 because we we blew that out of the water already. All right, so, so what are we doing with 35? I say the 35 stays there because it's he's identified that it's reasonable and necessary. I say that it's flat because that has been our existing practice, and we have a variety, and we're changing our policies, and we're self-insured. So it comes down to you, Mr. Chairman. Self-insured does not mean what the way you're objectively well, reasonable for us to be able that. to disagree. But there's a insurance has a process, and it's not self-insured doesn't mean there's that. So, so I just get, I'll give up on insurance. Thing. Need it, but it's okay. Oh, I want to go to the Okay. So, flat would be good. Especially because you're paying your flat. We can reduce it by not letting the assessor drive one of the vehicles without working. So, my vote would be stay flat on that since we're good. That's fine. Yeah. So, what will happen is, everything will ring my neck if I have to ask for more money. That's all. That's not going to live with that. Bonds. Bonds. 10,000. That one we need for sure because I've been paying it and not budgeted for it. We talked about it before. I'm in support of this one because you're already paying it. To yeah. be very quick. Yeah, yeah weed's not even legal in Idaho. What are we bonding it for? I know. Let, me, let me just clarify. If he's already paying for it, it's already in his budget. So there's no additional. No, I'm stealing payments. it from uh, other things. I'm not he's not. Bonds. But you've been able to make it work? I'm stealing it from It's not appropriately yeah. identified yeah. on the correct budget, yeah. is well, what the so problem well, is. So take should. 10,000 out of one line and move it to here. I don't have a with that because if he's already managing it within his budget. Then you're, you're going to reduce my deductibles. Well, if it's historically been managed, then I'm not I'm not in support of adding another $10,000 deficit. If, if we've been able to make it work, I would support continuing with the wheel that we have and the budget that we have instead of growing the budget another $10,000. But these are new items. Like the, what what is the, the gravel pit, that's a new thing. It's not been historically there. 
or all their fair bonds and, and you told me that was like a hundred dollars or a couple that was less than a thousand dollars i was under the impression like all the fair bonds were roughly five to six hundred all the elected around two thousand and then the road and bridge you have a gravel paper at the bond for epa type rules that's like the six or seven it adds up to 98 99 hundred dollars that's where itemizing would help no, but, if, itemized. You're, but if you if you what you were do you're not at this is actually new you just were paying for it in a different way yeah well i was kind of taking it out of this tort fund for claims there's no money there for it otherwise it but you can't so if you don't ask for the increase you can't afford to remove your ten thousand from that fund so you're asking us to add that here and payment. then it'll be recurring the next time it comes through it should be every year forever basically next hundred years so the, the way i explained it is that what you're looking for I'm looking at not trying for looking for funds for bonds, new funds, enhanced. I guess it's a new item we haven't had to do before. It just started a year or two ago. That we had to pay all the so bonds. So what you're asking for is that we add a new item for yeah. bonds because you can't afford to continue to Correct. do it the way you were doing yeah. it before. Yeah. And so this becomes an enhancement because it's technically okay. new, it's and new then year. it needs to be recurring because it's yeah. coming out of something else. Because you're not supposed. It's not supposed to be the way that you're doing it to make it exactly. work. Wait a second. Okay. Just so I'm confused, but have you been paying it out of out of funds? Out of the tort fund, but not out of bonds as they get zero. Or so really what zero. you could do is reduce the tort fund by that 10000 keep the line, and then you keep the same amount in that budget space, and then we Don't aren't say it. At, I know what you're saying. And then I adding 10000 He's saying <laughs> he can't this, afford to do that, though. But he has yeah. afforded it. It's no, not about we're not giving him an increase yeah. with his increase of cost. And so he's saying at this time, since we're doing that, we can't afford yeah, to borrow from one. Thing, yeah, it's Yeah, but it's not brand new. It's already been paid for a number of years. So no, it's pretty new. These are all new not, bonds this last year. It's pretty recent. Yeah. So, but so does your fund go in the negative? Oh, wait, I think I, I, every year I, I get the other does, and he's asking her right, to I give him money from the general. He's trying to get an answer question. It's not. So for clarity, the reason his he's had to come for towards and ask for money from the general fund is because he wasn't budgeting appropriately for his actual premiums that he was getting yep. every year, the annual cost. We've adjusted for that this year, so he's already gotten the increase for that. So the majority of the reason he's come forward to get from the contingency fund is because his liability insurance wasn't appropriated for in the right amount. That's been adjusted this year. And so he's saying because of, he needs to create a line item for this stuff. Right. And so no. that's a new item for an enhancement. That I understand. Will, right. I understand. But he's also been, so if we've adjusted for the premiums, then he should have still plenty of room within his budget okay. to cover this. I can just move 10000 into this line from somewhere else. Yeah. And then, not to be uh, cavalier about it, but it doesn't really matter in the end. Because what happens is we get our bill in for liability insurance. I'll go to auditors. Uh, you can't have any money because you went back. You give me more money. Like, that that is what I'm advocating is what Nancy suggested, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. If you do it, I'll go with Nancy's idea. Make a line for it because it's going to be back every year unless we quit operating the gravel pit, quit spraying the weeds. Okay. So okay. understanding your department, I think it needs to be on here and then come recurring next time because you're yeah. not receiving an increase in calculating for the problem. So yeah. I will say that that's my, I think you're getting pushed and pulled every time someone speaks and you're agreeing with them instead of you need that one. And I agree. Well, no, here's, no, here's why. Because every year I go through this and I get shot down and stays flat. No and I'm issues. trying to help you, but no, I every time I talk, <laughs> someone else talks and you switch no, no. it. Well, I'm just being, I'm being a little negative. Uh, that's okay. I get shot down every year, but that go to auditing and they open the fund anyway in the end. So that in the end, the money goes in the ground. So we're on the feet now? Uh, uh, what I don't you need? Oh, Pete, we got $12.80 right? left. What do you need? <laughs> it's on here, but I need it. <laughs> and I'll throw, in, a, I'll throw yeah. in another <laughs> buck. I got four quarters. <laughs> Okay. So what do you got there, Pete? Well, good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Um, I have a few uh, absolutely necessary increases that I'm proposing uh, at a very minimum. Uh, and uh, the first two items, just to, just for everyone's information, they are not uh, county employees. They're contractors. 
So we're discussing Park Oaks and Camp Oaks, but they're not county employees. So uh, the first 103087.51 is Mike Garfield's a campground host. And I'm asking, my number actually came down a little bit. Um, so I'm asking for a $1,000 increase on that line from 8,000 to 9,000. Uh, no. sim simply to bring up uh, the, the weekly, it's an 18 week season. Uh, they're paid bi-weekly and this would bring from 440 a week to 500 a week. Um, currently that's set at about $11 an hour. So I'm trying to it's pretty good deal bring for us. up. Just trying to keep them. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a thousand dollars there. Next line item 030, uh, 8752. Uh, I'm asking for a $1,700 increase. And that one uh, is my bond park contract uh, camp post, and that would be bringing that line item from 5500 to 7200 which is from 340 to 400 a week, which now is at 850 an hour. So again, that one's getting a bigger bump because I'm trying to bring it up to speed. Um, I think the next three, we already took care of these in your regular budget, so I don't think you need to address these. The, the garage, the diesel, and the, yeah. the next gas three, cost. Yeah, we already did that in the regular budget. Yeah. So they're not well, enhancements at this point. They're already done. The only question I have for you, I mean, as we're talking about going from 8 to 11, is sure. when we do the annual fee increase, or we look at fees for the campgrounds, could that be incorporated? But, I mean, we're, t we're talking, I mean, yes, before well, I would, can I would we? think even like the campground fees in and of itself would cover the host rather than the levy. So, oh, and that's something so we can kind of adjust whether we go from. Yes. Yeah. So this could be a self-funded? Yeah. Well, then he already collects campground yeah. fees, so that fee would cover whatever income. But he also budgets that money. But I don't yes. collect any fees at Bonner Park, so that's a completely different. Oh, okay. That's a completely different. Okay. Do you agree that those other items you already addressed? Other items are already addressed. They're straightforward necessities. Uh, but they were taken but they've care already been addressed. The general, yeah, they're in the budget. Yes. Okay. So you're asking for like twenty uh three thousand dollars. Twenty seven. Twenty seven hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. Yeah, well, I got forty nine ninety five. Thank you. Come in and give fifty thousand to Parks and Rec. You made her. <laughs> well, from where? We'll just put it in this way. Yeah, no. Are those yeses just so we have confirmation? I am a yes on the yes. Kick, bringing the campground host to eleven dollars an hour yeah. in this current market environment. I think that that is a heck of a deal for Bonner County. I will ask you: Are you having difficulty finding people apply for what you're listing? I've had the same contractors for uh, four years running now, so people, and they're excellent. So I want to try to keep. If they were to go away, um, I think we would we would struggle to find them. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, Pete, you made that kind of easy. for the end. Yeah. Well, oh. Mr. Chairman, can we have a five-minute recess? Uh, four minutes, thirty seconds. Fine. Okay. It is two twenty-three, and we will take a five-minute recess. Thank you.